Hey, what's going on guys? Shane here. In today's video, we're going to talk about how to properly hold your hands up in a fight or guard as we call it in combat sports. So these fundamentals are going to pertain to boxing, kickboxing, and MMA so that you can protect your face, your head, and your body. And then at the end, we're going to show you a drill that you can do to develop the muscles in your shoulders so that you can keep your hands up for the entire fight. Let's take a look. Okay, so let's first talk about the theory behind the guard. So the guard is just as it sounds. It's designed to protect the head and to protect the body. So the most common cue you're going to hear in fighting is keep your hands up. What does that mean? How high should my hands actually be? So if you have your hands up here at about shoulder level, not high enough because if people throw punches, they're going to come right over top of your guard and they're going to hit you in the face. Some people rest on their chin. Again, I don't think that's high enough. I like saying cheek or even eyebrow level. That's one thing I like doing through my gloves is I like peeking underneath of my fingers. So I'll go here with my guard and then I keep my elbows directly underneath of my hands because if I flare them out this way, you can see how it opens up my body and even my chin for uppercuts or front kicks to the chin. So what I like doing is designing the guard so that minimal movement to go from a parry, a helmet guard, a pillar, blocking body shots. If you've watched other videos, if you've any training in martial arts, you know how important it is to have a tight guard, not tight meaning flexed muscles, but compressed, everything is in nice and tight so that I don't have to reach for shots, right? Once I start reaching for things, that's when I'm exposed and that's when I'm gonna start getting hit. So when we keep everything in tight, that's when we're safe. So I keep my elbows underneath of my hands, I keep my chin tucked, and I try to protect my chin by tucking it underneath of my shoulder. So I keep it right here. If my shoulders are super relaxed and my chin is up high, even if my hands are up high, the punch can come around, the kick can come underneath, and I can get caught, whereas if I compress and tuck my chin and I keep my shoulder, again, not flexing, not super tight, but just a little bit of a lift, I'm a, I'm a lot more protected. The elbows are used to protect the body, right? So if I have too high of a guard, if I lift my hands up this high, my elbows are up high, you can see that my body is exposed now for kicks, for punches to the body. So what I need to do, again, is keep them a little bit tighter to the body so that when the punch comes in, I just connect the hard part. So the forearm bone and the hip bone protects all of the vital organs, protects my, my ribs, which are very vulnerable. So that's what this motion is here to protect the body shots. If it's coming straight down the center, I just squeeze the elbows together and I block with my elbows. Okay, so whether I'm blocking with my hands, blocking with my forearms, blocking my head, or blocking my body, this is the way that the guard is designed so that I can stop incoming punches or kicks from coming in. So just to demonstrate a little bit on the double end bag, I love this thing just because it hits back. Instead of it hitting me in the face or in the body, I'm just using my shields, and that's a great way of, of thinking about it. These are your shields or your swords and your deflecting shots. Whatever, whatever metaphor you want to use, this is what you're doing. You're stopping these shots from coming in. Now, yes, I can reach for it, but if I miss that bag, again, I'm going to get hit in the face. So keep everything in nice and tight. I'm hitting back, and I'm protected. Boom, boom. My hands are high, but not only that, my elbows are in. I'm not flaring them out here. Okay, so now that you understand the guard, let's look at a way that you can develop the muscles in your arms and shoulders so that you can keep your hands up for the entire fight. Okay, so if you want to develop the muscles in your arms, shadow box. Shadow boxing is the best way of creating habits, but you decide whether they're good habits or bad habits. So with my fighters, I make sure that their hands stay up the entire round and then they can rest in between rounds. But when you throw your punches, I want you to punch A to B. So A to B here and don't loop, don't come down this way. So straight out and straight back with your punches. And then when you're resting or when you're moving around, you're not moving like this. Again, bad habit right here. Let's just say you misjudge the distance and they catch you with a, with a jab, right? You don't want that to happen. So you want your resting position to be right here. And if you're doing this in your shadow boxing, in your training, it's going to carry over in a fight. You probably noticed I got two pound weights in my hand. It just added resistance. When you think about this, a lot of people say, is that good for increasing speed? A little bit, it helps with acceleration, but gravity is coming down, so it's my shoulders that are forcing these weights to stay up that's gonna put more stress here, and that's, those are the muscles that are keeping my hands up in a fight. Another drill is hitting the speed bag. Again, not really for developing speed, more so for rhythm, but when you do it for a couple rounds, you start to feel it in your deltoids, in your shoulders, and that's what keeps your hands up. So, when you're shadow boxing, set the round for three minutes, two minutes maybe as a beginner, you can go up to five minutes, and when you rest, when you're moving around, don't rest down here, don't rest them on your chin. Make sure they're up at at least cheek level, if not eyebrow. All right, so when you're shadow boxing, not only are you punching A to B and B back to A, but you wanna rip these shots, right? You wanna be thrown at 100% after your warm up round, because you really wanna break down and develop these muscles. 
After the bell sounds, let's say you did your two, three, five minute round, immediately hold your arms straight out to your side, whether you have the weights or not. And then what I like doing is just flutter up and down. And I'll do this for 20 seconds. Then I'll go forward, 20 seconds, all right? Then from there, then you can give yourself your minute rest, but you'll notice your shoulders are on fire and then you just go a little bit more. Then you just really pump them up. You really break down that muscle. You give yourself time to recover and then you can come back that much stronger. And again, one cue that I like thinking in my head is not hands up, but elbows in. Make sure my elbows are underneath of my hands and you can kind of see how that just keeps everything structurally sound. So again, the guard is designed for maximum uh, uh, protection and minimal movement to stop those shots from coming in. All right, guys, there you have it, the guard. It's just as it sounds. You're guarding your head, you're guarding your body so that you don't take any damage. Now, there's different ways of adjusting the guard, whether it's for boxing, for kickboxing, depending on how you're built, what your style is. And we're gonna do some follow-up videos that you can experiment with so that you don't have to just fight like a robot. So we'll have more videos on that later on. But until then, be sure to subscribe to get the fight tips before your opponent does. I'm Shane with Fight Tips for the Underdogs.